A very relieved mum and dad bring two-year-old Anthony back to the ward after the latest treatment to reconstruct his hips and legs. It all began six weeks ago and it was the first procedure of this kind ever attempted in Britain. The nine-hour operation was carried out by visiting American surgeon Draw Paley. And this morning, Professor Nick Clark removed so Anthony's plaster cast and told me he was very pleased with the results. The surgery that we've done to reconstruct the leg has, as you can see, lined it, it's lengthened it, and we now have a very good posture on the right side, whereas previously it was very similar to this. These x-rays show how Anthony's hip joint has been corrected. So there's the plate across the defect, there's where we've broken it and reset, these are the screws to hold it in place, and this is another drill hole accommodating a bone morphogenic protein strip to try and get this defect to heal. So this is the splint which we're going to rehabilitate him in. The aim of this operation is to give Anthony as normal a life as possible. He'll wear this brace until his hip has mended, but in a few years' time he'll be wearing something quite similar to stretch his legs. We wouldn't be engaging in this sort of major surgery unless we felt there was a good chance that we could get him to have symmetrical leg lengths which function virtually normally with good normal height and normal knee function and hip function. It's been hard watching their son undergo this complex operation. But mum and dad are extremely grateful for everything that's been done for him. What are you up to now for the future? Uh, just that all three of us go through it, come out the other end, you know, that he remembers as little of this as possible. You know, uh, he's went through a wee bit of pain. And at the end of the day, that someday, me and him will run about and kick a football. This is just the start of a long process for Anthony, with his left hip being operated on in about a year's time. But the early signs are good. So far, everything seems to be going according to plan. Richard Sully in Southampton for Meridian tonight. Well, you're going to splice this with what I'm going to do up on the wall, because that'll be exactly, no sense. Yes. Yeah? Exactly. It'll, it'll be a flavour. Obviously, yeah, this is quite a dramatic shot to show the viewer. This is quite groundbreaking. You can have the little fella here. It's you know, a real bonus. Two yes, it's because the professor's explaining to me what they've done, so we'll need to be a two shot. Yeah, okay. Mark? Yeah. Okay, all right. So, in your own time, Professor. So, you can see there's very marked deficiency of the femur on the left here. And this was the position we started on the right. The surgery that we've done to reconstruct the leg has, as you can see, realigned it. It's lengthened it. And we now have a very good posture on the right side whereas previously it was very similar to this. And just how groundbreaking is this work you've done? So this is a procedure that's common, commonly performed for this condition, which is very rare in North America. And there are one or two surgeons who do this very rarely. It's never been done in the United Kingdom before. Uh, and this is the first time. The, the procedure took over eight hours. It was a very prolonged, very difficult procedure, but has dramatic results. Um, and so therefore we consider it worthwhile to be innovative for this sort of condition where we can. Is it a procedure now you'll think you'll, you'll be doing regularly? Well the big challenge is of course we've got the other side. So we're going to have to think very carefully about the other leg and obviously we'd be very enthusiastic about doing that. And if we see others then yes we will consider it. So when do you decide to do the other leg? What, what needs to happen now? Well what we'll do is we'll have a look at some x-rays and I'll show you exactly what we were treating and what decision making has to be done. Is it likely you'll do the other side quite soon? Uh, we want him a little bit larger, but within about a year, hopefully. And what does this mean for this, this young chap? I mean, what, what's the future hold for him now? Well, providing we get the limb length symmetrical, he means that he will have relatively normal function without prostheses or aids. So he can walk independently without any, any help uh, with reasonable leg length. How do you feel about being involved in this procedure? Well, it's, uh, I'm, very, I'm very privileged um, and I'm very pleased that I was able to persuade the American surgeon to come and visit Southampton, which is a great honour for us. Just explain how rare this sort of situation is. It's very rare. It's a congenital abnormality that occurs, um, and the exact incidence is very rare indeed, but it's probably less than one in, one in half a million, probably. Just how is this going to impact on his life in the future, do you think? Well, enormously, because he will, as I say, be free of AIDS and he'll be able to walk independently. Um, we've got all the movement back and we've rehabilitated and done the other side. Yeah, it's a long journey, but it has a remarkable payoff. Good. Thank you very much for explaining that. Okay. Right. 
this is well, just you, just for your purposes. You might want to get one picture of this when it's on. Uh, you won't want to do it now, but we'll fix it, and then you can see this is so. This is the splint which we're going to rehabilitate him in. So to start with, he's going to get going with this. And how long will he have this on for? Probably about six to eight weeks until he's got his uh, until he's got his movement, because we've got to restore movement to the knee, which is completely reconstructed and uh, also for the hip which has been reconstructed so there's going to be a degree of stiffness. Fortunately in children it's not so bad but it, it needs some support just to get him going and it's very unusual for him. He, he won't understand where his leg is. It so would be a bit of a shock for him yeah, when he wakes up. Right. So he's all in the wrong position because before it was up here so we just need to reinforce that it's straight and uh, out to length. So uh, we thought we'd, um, we'd protect him to start with stop him doing anything because he's a bit of a tear away this guy. That's all right, you can take a picture of that. So you want a picture of that, which is the spare thing on we'll just uh do that then we're gonna take we're gonna take some wires out but I'll take you upstairs. There you go. Happy right. right, if you would like to take him upstairs and then uh, I will come up and go, we'll go through the x-rays. It'll be much clearer when you see the x-rays and then you can splice it all together and then you can talk to mum and dad. Yeah. Right, Thank you very much. Thank you. See you there. I'll be, I'll be up in about 10 minutes. I'm just going to get the wire. So here we have the x-ray of the pelvis and um, this is the lower leg bone, the tibia, and you can see how large this is effectively compared to this very small femur, which is the one on the left that you see, and the one that we haven't reconstructed. Even the right side is very deficient. It's very short, it's very small, and there's a defect at the top here where the bone hasn't formed at all. And that's what we've reconstructed. And if we go into the... Uh, uh, x-rays again you can see that what we've done is to break the bone here we put a custom-made plate which we imported from the United States into the center of the ball across that defect lengthen this by biomechanically lengthening the shaft and then at the end we put some special bone morphogenic protein up in there as well to try and get the defect to heal so that's the current situation and clinically the leg is now straight it's in the right position and it's all fixed that will heal over a period of weeks, we hope, and then we'll remove the plate when it has healed, and that'll be one more small operation. Well, the whole aspiration is that he will be relatively normal. I mean, we wouldn't be engaging in this sort of major surgery unless we felt there was a good chance that we could get him to have symmetrical leg lengths which function virtually normally with good normal height and normal be knee function and, and hip function. So he'll be running, jumping, diving? Well, we, we hope that he will participate normally in all sports and normal activities. So I'm following you, don't worry. Nice and happy. Good leg spin. Good leg spin, I'm answering. Yes, 
Ja, ja, doe je het. Is zo. Mam, nee. How are you feeling now that you know a little Anthony here is sort of going through this whole long process? Um, I'm being that emotional, but when I was down there in recovery, took a look at his leg and seen the work that's been done. Professor Clark, um, George Paley, who came over from America uh, for, for for the operation, and tears in the eyes. You know, um, very emotional. Yeah. What are your hopes now for the future of Anthony? Uh, just that all three of us go through, come out the other end. You know that. He remembers as little as, as possible, you know, uh, he's went through a wee bit of pain and at the end of the day, that someday, me and him will run about and kick a football. That's your dream, is it, that he can live a normal life? Well, if it was Gaelic, it'd be better. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, and how has he been w w w with this uh, situation uh, he's been in? He's been brilliant, you know, uh, even after the operation he had a, a wee bit of a, a seizure. Uh, where he was shaking, eyes rolled back in the head, I thought something out there. Um, when we got him back home to Guernsey, it was just uh, probably the wrong terminology, but took things things in a stride, you know. But Brendan, he's a creepy guy, a uh, great character, very strong willed. Yeah. And just generally, what what are your thoughts about the people that helped you here? Um, powerful. Um, right from would have been about twenty two weeks when the first gave us a prognosis, uh, an early prognosis in Guernsey was. Uh, Two conditions may have been life threatening. One was called campomelic dysplasia, which was a narrowing of the chest where the organs would have grew and smothered each other in the womb. And the other one was arthrogryposis, but as it turned out, it was femoral dysplasia, which was the lower limbs. Um, from there, from Guernsey, Guernsey's been brilliant to us. Um, the healthcare over there, the physiotherapists, uh, Professor Clark, all in the staff here, everyone. Um, just brilliant. Well, it's hard to put into words. And just um, tell me again, wh what are your hopes now for uh, as his dad? You know, wh what do you hope his f the future holds for Anthony? It's probably just the same as any other father. You know that he's a happy life, lives. You know, gives us as much joy as any other child would to any other parent. I see him as no different. You know, and someday we'll run around the park together. Right, so Good. Well done. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Just, just the future. Yeah. Yeah. Give me choking up there. Mm-hmm.